Good morning, everyone. My name is Jillian Bender Cormier. I'm brand manager with Bender Insurance Solutions. We want to welcome you to another educational Bender U webinar discussing best practices and the future of security awareness training. Some housekeeping notes. At the end of this webinar, we will have an engaging Q&A session that I will be facilitating. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to type them into the chat box or in the Q&A section. During the Q&A time near the end of the presentation, I'll be sharing your questions with our speaker. We want to be conscious of time, so if we don't get to answer all of your questions, we will gladly reach out to you individually after the webinar. You are all in listen-only mode and will remain muted throughout the webinar. This session is being recorded, and at the conclusion of the webinar, the recording link as well as a copy of the slide deck will be forwarded to you. We have an incredible expert sharing with us this morning, but I'll let our own technology risk advisor, Brian Murray, have the honor of introducing her. Welcome, Brian. Thanks very much, Jillian. I'm really excited about our speaker and the, the topic today. So I get the, how do I protect my business from cyber attacks question now probably multiple times a day. And the top two recommendations we give are multi-factor authentication, which hopefully everyone here has set up in some way or their, their company does. And the second one is security training for your employees, specifically ongoing cybersecurity awareness training. We actually partner with No Before for our employee awareness training here at Bender, but I also use, share their free tools, all their resources with my clients as well. Highly recommend checking those out at uh, nobefore.com. So it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Brittany Scott. Brittany serves as the vice president of SMB sales for No Before. They're the provider of the world's largest security awareness training and simulated phishing platform. She was able to work her way quickly up the ranks at No Before after she joined and contributed to their most recent accomplishment of the organization going public in April of last year. Brittany has won awards for her, her contributions to No Before's sales success, including a Stevie Award for Women of the Year in sales, and is a recipient of the SBUS Women in Business and Professions World Awards. She was also recognized as a top 100 LinkedIn sales star. Brittany founded the Women in Technology Employee Resource Group at No Before and is an advisory board member for the Florida, Florida Diversity Council. She holds a, an MBA from Johnson & Wales University and a Bachelor of Science from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. So thank you so much again for being here, Brittany, and take it away. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Brian. Oh, sorry about that. Um, thank you so much, Brian. It's so nice to be here. Um, really appreciate you guys having me here today and excited to share my passion of security awareness training. Um, he uh, gave me a great intro, but a little bit more about me. This great picture to the left over here, one of my employees uh, does some graphic art, so he created that for me. I thought it was pretty cool. But um, alongside my MBA, I also have a SACP, which is a new H layer certification. It's the Security Awareness Culture Professional. Um, really great uh, certification, and definitely recommend for anybody that's really looking to dive in and really get an understanding of the holistic approach when it comes to security awareness training, which we'll dive into that a little bit today. Um, like Brian mentioned, I am the founder of the Women in Technology Employee Research Group, and I've been in uh, this particular industry for over um, five years now. So let's get started. So um, phishing. Fishing by the numbers. Um, it's a little bit scary out there. Um, as you know, hackers are utilizing, um, you know, new ways to really gain entry into your organization, and that comes with phishing. So they're sending out malicious links to your employees um, who, you know, sometimes are not always aware of what those look like. Um, the numbers around phishing attacks are absolutely shocking. Um, from CEO fraud and W-2 scams to ransomware, it is where the bad guys are focused. Um, so, I'm just going to ask this uh, a question I know nobody can answer, but how much do you think ransomware cost the world in 2021? I was absolutely 
amazed by this number, but it's a staggering $20 billion. Um, recovering from a ransomware attack averaged about $1.85 million for businesses in 2021, and 83% of small and medium businesses are not equipped to recover from a ransomware attack. Um, I specialize in the small and medium businesses um, when working with organizations and IT professionals, and I unfortunately get to hear these stories, um, and a lot of times they're being reactive versus proactive, which is really where security awareness training comes in place. Um, you know, I know a lot of organizations have backups, golden images, but only 57% of businesses can actually recover um, from this and get their data back from a backup. I wanted to highlight a few recent attacks in 2021. A few of these I'm sure you've heard in the news, but um, one of the biggest ones was the Colonial Pipeline. Um, in May of 2021, it affected the flow of oil across the eastern U.S. So um, you probably saw the news about the backups in Virginia um, trying to get gas because unfortunately um, it did cause issues with that. Um, secondly, um, JBS USA. So in June of 2021, the meat processing vendor JBS um, was actually hit by a ransomware attack that reduced the company's ability to package meat products. Um, they paid actually $11 million in ransomware. I'm sorry, in ransom. And then in July of 2021, Kaseya um, was a victim of a supply chain ransomware attack. So Unfortunately, um, it's not so much boot on the on the grounds warfare anymore. It's cyber warfare, and a lot of these um, hackers are based in non-extradition countries, so we can't really go after them. Um, and it's a huge industry, and um, is only going to be going to grow. So it's really, really important that we start to um, arm your users for battle. So. Your users really need to understand um, that the bad guys are after them and you need to arm them for this batter, battle. Previously, this was utilizing different measures um, or layers of security such as filtering systems, antivirus, etc. Although these are real, real, so very helpful, um, you do have to equip your users to be that last line of attack. So we call it the human firewall. Um, and to do that, it is utilizing new school security awareness training, which is really the success here. So just because I'm aware doesn't mean that I care. So what does that mean? Your users probably have heard of these ransomware attacks. They probably know what phishing is. Um, they're aware of what goes on, but it doesn't always mean that they care, right? Um, so we really have to find new ways um, to get them to buy in and understand what that looks like. And traditional awareness efforts are based on the belief or hope that information leads to action. So, you know, if, if we put them in a room, we tell them, hey, these are the things that you need to look out for. Um, a lot of times, you know, organizations feel that this will be able to really mitigate the risk. Unfortunately, it doesn't automatically always resort in, result in secure behavior. Um, we have to consistently work with our end users. Um, we have to test and train them. So this starts to be become more of an action that's ingrained in them versus just having a belief or hope that they understand. I really like this <laughs> visual here, but you know, uh, Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. So that's that being uh, reactive um, that I mentioned earlier. We definitely want to be proactive and we don't want um, to have your users be the reason why that there's a security breach. Um, so we have to get in front of it. And I'm going to tell you the five best practices to embrace this that will really help you in your organization. So first, having explicit goals before starting. Two, decide what behaviors you want to shape. Choose two or three and work on those for 12 to 18 months. Um, number three, treat your program like a marketing campaign with relevant information. Four, you want to fish frequency, uh, I'm sorry, frequently, at least once a month. And finally, don't be a jerk, <laughs> meaning don't alienate your people. And we'll dive um, into each one of these uh, practices to really help set you up for success. So the first one here, which is having explicit goals before starting. So before beginning, you really want to be completely honest with yourself uh, about your goals and what your current organizational culture will tolerate. 
you know, ask yourself what measurable results you want out of the program. Is it a lower click rate, reduced malware infections, do you have compliance requires to meet, etc. So you really want to start in have an understanding of what your landscape is um, and then create those goals that your you know culture will be able to really take um, and tolerate and then change that behavior like i mentioned earlier so the second one is deciding what behaviors you want to shape so you want to choose two or three you don't want to go uh, too far and wide on this and work on those for 12 to 18 months so i call this the magic one one thought experiment if you could wave a magic wand and instantly change three security behaviors in your organizations, what would they be? This is a great question to really start um, to ask yourself, all right, let me think about our um, security culture. Let me uh, really get a, a true understanding of what that looks like and what things we really need to work on. You know, unfortunately, I wish it was easier to get users to change their behavior, um, but it is difficult. Um, and I like this uh, tweet here about human nature. We're lazy, so social, and creatures of habit. Design products for this reality. So we got to tackle these three, um, you know, things here in order to really design a product that's going to be able to change the desired behaviors of your end users. Um, and what that is, is you really have to look at it as a holistic approach. Um, you have to really understand the culture of your organization. You have to understand the intrinsic motivators of your end users and really get them to understand the why behind the security awareness training. Um, we talk about transformational security awareness training, um, and this is where it comes into play. So you know, understanding their behaviors, understanding, you know, what drives them, getting them to understand the why behind it. It's gonna take them from just being aware of what's going on to them actually caring, which is going to help you really um, benefit and have a successful security awareness training program. So the third one here is treat your program like a marketing campaign with relevant information. So what does making it relevant mean? Um, you know. I mentioned earlier about stuffing uh, users in a break room once a year, you know, feeding them some coffee and donuts, slowing up, throwing up some PowerPoint slides will not change their behavior in a noticeable way. What is really missing is a correct estimate, estimate, estimation of the adverse, um, adversary being faced and the degree of commitment an organization has. So, um, you know, what that means is what I mentioned earlier, they have to really buy into it. They have to know what this is going to do for them, how they're making an impact on the organization. So that's where the training comes into place. Um, they're going to be a, a part of this by um, being able to notice, hey, what a phishing email looks like, how they're able to go ahead and report that to them. And they'll start to feel that change and start to feel like they're really making an impact into your organization um, and being safer at the end of the day. You really want to nudge them in the right direction. Um, you don't want to completely ban something. And I like this visual here because you're nudging somebody to recycle, you know, instead of throwing their water bottle into this landfill, let's throw it into the recyclable bin, right? Um, so as a nudge, we will use the term, you know, it, it's an aspect of the choice architecture that alters people's behavior in a predictable way without forbidding any options or significantly changing their economic incentives. Um, so nudges are not mandates. Um, you know, putting fruit in an eye level counts as a nudge. Banning junk food does not. And unfortunately, as human beings, um, we like to naturally, um, you know, go against uh, changes. So we, we just wanna nudge them. And what that looks like is, you know, hey, let's do some security awareness training. Let's have some interactive videos. Let's make it fun. Um, and then let's have the why behind it. What's it gonna do for you and what it's going to do for the organization. So for here, um, phishing frequency, the, frequently, I'm sorry, um, at least once a month. This is really, really important. Um, because what it's going to do is going to have your users get into a behavior. They know they're getting fished once a month um, through a simulation um, with a, a training platform that you have. And then they're going to really start to look because they don't want to be that person that clicks on a simulated phishing email and then goes into training. And then, you know, eventually it might be something they uh, click on a real one. So training on its own 
Typically once a year is not enough. Um, you know, simulated fishing of groups of employees on its own doesn't work, um, but together they can be combined to greatly increase effectiveness. Um, and we call this a fully mature security awareness training. Um, so I, I've talked to organizations in the past that have training in place, um, but they didn't have the phishing, so they couldn't really gauge to see if it was working. Um, what you do with a, a phishing uh, campaign, you know, you initially do a baseline test, so you test all your users, you really get an understanding of where your organization's at, um, and then you roll out training, and then you do the simulated phishing once a month. So you're able to gauge to see if, hey, is this training working? Are they picking up? Is it the same end users that are clicking on um, simulated phishing links? Let's get them some really in-depth uh, targeted training so we can change this behavior. You also wanna fish like the bad guys. Um, you know, I've heard organizations say, oh, um, we, we create our own phishing um, templates and we send them out to all of our users, but they send them all at the same time. It's the same email. So, you know, you're, you're getting the prairie dog effect when um, one of your end users in the office or even at home now with all of the different um, uh, communication tools we have like Slack or uh, Google Chat, but they'll ping them, be like, hey, don't click on that that email that you got from Bob. It's a, you know, it's a phishing attack. Um, so hackers know this. They're not going to send the same email to everybody in your organization. They're going to um, do some spearheaded phishing. So they're going to, you know, send an email to Sally and couple days later, maybe send a different one to Bob in the office. Um, the other way is to guard against this is to use what are full random simulated phishing attacks, like I mentioned. Um, so you definitely want to uh, utilize different ones. Um, and you also want to spoof your domain. So um, what the hackers are unfortunately able to do is spoof your domain. So it looks like it's coming from inside your organization. Um, I actually got one the other day and it looked like it was from my CEO and it was um, CEO at nobefore.com and I know that we don't use that email address but it still looked pretty pretty good um, not going to lie you know I forwarded over to uh, my CEO Stu just to say hey look at what's going on out there um, and he thought it was so good he actually brought it up in our morning meeting but um, you have to be very very careful because they're being um, really sophisticated. It's not the Prince of Nigeria email anymore where you, you know you get a couple million dollars from a Prince in Nigeria. It's looking like it's coming from your HR department. I've seen ones where it looked like it was a uh, annual uh, performance review sent from your HR team um, and it looked like a Google Calendar invite. So they're getting very sophisticated so it's really really important that we're able to find ways to train your users and make sure that it does stick at the same time. All right so the last one here is don't be a jerk. So don't alienate your people. Um, so what that means is your awareness program and content are the visible 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 face of your department to the rest of the company. So you don't want to um, have, you know, a, um, a, a clickers group in the sense where you're throwing people's name up and saying, hey, Bob and accounting clicked. Um, you know, you gotta be more careful. Um, you definitely wanna have an awareness program that is imploring your end users to really buy in, to really get on board, to be excited about it. Um, and that does start from the culture of it. Um, you really have to understand, like I mentioned earlier, the intrinsic motivators, what's gonna drive your end users, the why, um, and you're going to have to design that with your team. So I always recommend getting on board with the CEO and the HR department, um, and that way you can really have a united front at the end of the day, and it's going to be um, an amazing uh, security awareness training program that is going to benefit not only you, your end users, and then they're going to start to take that information and share it with their friends and family. And as the world goes on and the hackers are only getting more sophisticated, if we can be one step of, ahead of them, then we're going to be able to really um, change the, um, the risk of the organization. 
Here's some really great resources that are free on our website. Um, so we have a free domain spoof test. So you can actually find out now if your hackers can spoof an email address on your own. So it's a really great tool. It takes a couple seconds um, to check that out. We have a free CEO fraud prevention manual. So this manual um, does provide a thorough overview of how executives are compromised such an attack and what to do if you become a victim, definitely recommend that as well. Um, we have a free phishing security test. So um, it's up to 100 users. It's pretty standard. It's based on your um, email client. So either Office 365, um, Outlook or uh, Gmail. Um, we also have a th free ransomware simulator. So this is pretty cool, but it will simulate 10 ransomware infection scenarios and see if your workstation is vulnerable to an infection. Um, we have a free fish alert button. So this is a really great way to have your end users report a phishing attack with one click. Um, a lot of organizations I talk to, typically what happens is they have maybe um, a dedicated email address. And a lot of times users won't forward any type of emails um, because they don't want to spend the extra time to do that. Um, but with this fish alert button, it's just literally a click. They don't have to look at it and it, it deletes it out of their inbox. So they don't even have to click delete so it saves them um, an extra click. And then finally, um, our free weak password test. Um, so this gives you a quick look at the uh, effectiveness of your password policies and any fails so that you can take action. Um, something that actually happened to me is I was on um, the, the dark web, unfortunately I got my email address somehow, um, probably back in the day when I was using, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six is my password um, before I start working for no before, but um, you know, they were able to, to run um, some, some dark web scans as well, um, which we do offer and they were able to find me on those websites. So I had to go ahead and completely get rid of that email address, change my email address, but um, it's crazy what they can do in the dark web and uh, what you would find on there. Um, but that was my presentation here. Um, really appreciate the time. Um, I am the VP of SMB Sales. Um, here's my email address if you have any other questions. Um, and that is my direct phone number as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brittany. And uh, we're going to go ahead and open it up to our Q&A time. Again, uh, go ahead and type in your, those questions that you have. I'm sure you have them for Brittany uh, into the Q&A section of, uh, of GoToWebinar. Okay, we have one here, Brittany. How do you get employees to buy in? Well, that's a great question. Um, so what you want to do is you really want to have conversations around this topic. Um, and I always talk to IT professionals about having champions within every department of your organization um, get the get their buy-in. You know, it might be um, an employee, it might be a manager, um, but have those uh, conversations with those specific people because then they're going to be able to champion on um, the why behind the security awareness training program. Um, it's definitely a holistic cultural approach, um, you know, and people want to know what it's, what's in it for them, you know, what will happen if I do this? Why am I doing this, right? So having those conversations around it, having your champions really get them to buy in and see the need of it is really going to help um, and really assist with it in an amazing uh, security awareness training program. Thank you so much. Um, another question we have come in. What are some best practices when rolling out a security awareness training program? Another great question. Um, so some best practices is, um, you know, first and foremost, like I mentioned earlier, um, getting those champions within every department. Um, secondly, is really working with, um, you know, your IT team um, to find the weaknesses. So you want to look at past experiences. Um, hey, have we been hit by ransomware? What did that look like? What happened to um, our organization? Was there downtime? Did we have to do the backup? Um, and then just be really honest with yourself. Um, you know, really have a, a true understanding of, of what you want to accomplish and why you're trying to accomplish this. Um, so really diving into some of the weak areas in the organizations 
and coming up with ways that you can really help with those. And that would, you know, look like a simulated phishing training program, right? So what would be the best for the organization? Is it spoofing the domain? Is it um, coming from Amazon? Um, what are other um, uh, things that happened in the past where your end user clicked on an actual phishing link? So having that all, um, uh, communicate it prior to setting it up, um, but then doing the baseline. So you want to do the baseline and fish all your users um, before you let them know that you're implementing a security awareness training program. This is going to give you a real idea of what your organization looks like right now when it comes to your um, risk. And once you get that percentage, and just to give you an idea, it's right around 30% um, is the average that we found would click on a phishing link um, without any type of training. Um, and then you roll out, all right, hey, let's let's talk about the fish alert button. Let's talk about um, what security awareness training is, what it looks like. And then you dive in, all right, we're going to start doing simulate phishing emails. This is how you report them. Um, and then have those residual training modules for those who um, fail and have them instantly. So they're able to um, learn at the point of failure, which is really going to be able to click and stay with them. Um, and then, you know, I don't only have one time a year training for those who never click on it, still continue to have little bite size um, reminders as you're going throughout the year. Um, because like I said, the hackers are getting more and more sophisticated. So it's really important that you continue to drive in um, the importance of security awareness training and why this is in place. Thanks, Brittany. Mm -hmm. Another question, um, how do you know that it's working? So, how you know that is working, it's going to be a, um, a few things. Um, first and foremost, you're going to see your um, fishing percentage go down. Um, so your fish perm percentage is what we call it. So from that 30% mark, um, you know, we hope within three months um, that does cut in half. And after a year, around 2%, which is pretty incredible from a start point of 30%. Um, so you will see that when it comes to the physical um, numbers. The other way is you're going to see a change in the culture, um, in the dynamic of your employees. You're going to see them get excited that the fact that, hey, I reported an actual um, phishing email. Um, we share um, any real life phishing emails that get reported. We have our own Slack group um, that the InfoSec team shares with us. And it gets, ex it gets me excited. I, I shared one, um, a really sophisticated one in the past and it got um, reported and everybody's like, wow, that's a really good one. So you get eyes on it. So you're, and you just start to get really excited. They start to um, read up about um, you know, what's going on in the world. Um, I have, <laughs> I have friends that use no before they're really excited and they're like, oh man, um, I passed. I was really excited. I didn't click on that. So even my friends are sharing with me like, Hey, I was able to spot that fish. So it's really exciting to see, you know, what security awareness training can do in, um, for your organization and see this, uh, culture change around it. Um, you know, I even have some, employees um, at different organizations that I talk to their IT professionals that share, um, you know, the, the JBS uh, USA food incident. They saw it and they're like, oh man, this happened with the phishing link. I'm so glad, you know, we have training so we don't do something like that. Um, so you'll you'll start to see it in twofold. First and foremost, obviously the statistical side of it, but you'll also see it as a culture change as well, which is when you know that it is working. Thanks, Brittany. Um, we have another question that has come in. What industries are most affected by ransomware? So it has changed over the last few years. Um, when I first uh, initially started at No Before, they were heavily focused on banks, financial institutions, um, because if you think about it, that's where the money's at. However, this has definitely changed over the years. Um, last year, actually, the number one um, most fished vertical was government institutions. So that starts to tell me that, hey, um, we're, we're getting into that cyber warfare arena. So um, we're seeing a lot of government. Secondly is manufacturing, which you'd be surprised about, but um, a lot of times they, they go after the manufacturers because a lot of um, the employees are um, 
not typically always utilizing their email. However, they're on the email domain, so they might get an email from their HR team, et cetera, but they're not using it every single day, day in and day out. Um, especially those that are working on the line, et cetera. So they do target those because they know that there is an area of weakness there when it comes to the manufacturing um, organizations. Um, surprisingly enough, um, the number, the, the least vertical that's um, being attacked right now um, is schools, which over the last few years has changed. That was one of the number one. Um, but I have seen that a lot of um, schools have security awareness training in place, um, same with financial institutions. So I do see this change and that's um, why I believe that they're being less targeted um, at this point. But if you have an email address, um, it doesn't matter um, if you sell t-shirts or you know, um, you're know you at a bank, you are still a target for a uh, hacker. So it's really important no matter what industry you're in or what vertical that you're in that you have security awareness training in place. Thank you. Uh, another question that we have, what increased risks do you see in this pandemic world where many employees are working remote? That's a great question. Um, so with the change of going remote, um, a lot of employees felt a false sense of security. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm, on, I'm at home. I don't have to worry about it. Um, I'm not at, you know, utilizing um, the Wi-Fi at the at the office, right? So the hackers definitely took that and ran with it because even though you're still working from home, um, if you click on a phishing link, um, you still are risking your organization um, them getting into that the, the um, different files, et cetera. So it doesn't really matter where you work at the end of the day. Uh, if you're still on your uh, organization's domain, you're still risking uh, potential uh, you know, data breaches, et cetera. So um, if anything, we should be more aware um, and more secure because we are working from home. And we have seen an uptick in um, phishing and ransomware over 2020 and 2021. Um, it actually went from, I believe, 11 billion in 2019 to um, 20 billion in 2021. So you can see that they are targeting more and more. So we have to um, really step up our uh, end user awareness and really get them to understand that, hey, even though that you're at home, this can still affect the organization. So you still have to continue to be secure, if not even more aware of what's going on. Thanks, Brittany. We have uh, another question. Uh, other than up-to-date backups, what ransomware software protection is currently the best? We were hit by ransomware February 1st, 2021 and had ransomware software protection, but it didn't stop it. Um, we did confine it to one server, three workstations, but still it took a week to get all of the, um, it, to get that all backed up. So the question is, um, uh, what ransomware software protection is currently the best? So, ransomware protection software, um, it's definitely a layer of security. Um, I can't say which one would be the best because I honestly don't know all of the different softwares in that um, realm. However, um, whatever you do choose, um, we call there's seven layers of security. Um, so you have the, the filtering systems like Mimecast, Barracuda, things like that. Um, you have your antivirus, you have your ransomware backups, et cetera. Um, but the eighth layer, which is the new layer, is that human element. So um, unfortunately, 10 to 15% of phishing emails um, that cause ransomware, et cetera, are still gonna get through all of that. Um, so it's really, really important at the end of the day that you are training your end user um, because they are that last line of defense. Um, and you know, uh, unfortunately with like Office 365 with their different filtering systems, there is that false sense of security as well with that, um, but they're still able to get through all of those systems. So. Um, I can't really tell you which one would be the best, um, to be honest, but what I can tell you, um, having a security awareness training in place as well will definitely um, help you in that regard as well. Thanks, Brittany. And we had um, uh, an audience member share that CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 are good EDRs to help with ransomware detections. 
So I'm not Perfect. sure if you're familiar yeah. with CrowdStrike or Sentinel One, but that yep. was shared by someone. Great, thank you. Yeah. Uh, another question that we have is um, what the best security practices in addition to training that you would recommend? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Absolutely. Uh, what are the best security practices in addition to training that you would recommend? So I would recommend um, having a newsletter. Um, if you guys are still in the office, I'm not quite sure how many people still go back in the office. I'm hybrid, so we have some people in the office. But, um, you know, we have posters up everywhere, you know, in the bathrooms. We call it primetime real estate for reading <laughs> the bathroom stalls. Um, but, you know, it's really important that you keep it really visible and top of mind. Um, so having best practices when it comes to security awareness training. Um, we have a email that comes out, um, Slack messages. Um, we talk about it in our morning meetings or morning huddles. So you want to continue to keep it top of mind because even though that you have a security awareness training in, uh, program in place and you are testing them, you know, once a month or biweekly, et cetera, you still want to have conversations around it and really make it a, a focus point because it's really going to stick um, and have that top of mind approach. Um, so those are some different ways that you can really uh, continue to um, have conversations around it um, and keep it, you know, fresh and up to date. Awesome. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, another question. What are some new phishing or other social engineering techniques uh, you're hearing about right now? So what I've been hearing about with, with um, sophisticated uh, phishing emails that are coming through um, is, is also something called smishing. So, um, you know, with the, the two-factor um, authentication, there's actually ways around it with the hackers. So what they're doing is they're sending you um, a text um, and it says, hey, here's a code, um, please, you know, uh, send it back to this phone number, which you never want to do. Um, but what they're doing is they're having, they're trying to sign into something for you. Um, and then they're having you text that number back to them. And then if, people do that, then they get that number and they're able to go ahead and put that into the 2FA um, and they're able to kind of circumvent, um, you know, that two-factor authentication to get into certain um, programs or email uh, clients or things like that. So that's something that I've been seeing more and more of. Um, another thing is vishing. So it's voice phishing. And um, I've been getting a ton of these, but people calling you, um, you know, asking for a certain code or even there was one where um, they just wanted you to say yes and they were able to use, record that yes and use it to say for prompts for you know banking um, calls or anything like that because they have a, a recorded um, yes from you so very sophisticated very scary um, so we definitely have to make sure that we're being um, really proactive when it comes to that and you know not only talking to your end users about email uh, phishing but there are multiple um, other ways that they're going through and getting information from you but the texting one is definitely something really scary and I've seen it a few times um, another one is like a around the holidays they'll have hey click here to see your UPS delivery um, so they'll send you a text and then if people click it they're able to get into your information on your phone as well so a couple other ways that they're getting some information Ooh, those are frightening yeah <laughs> um, I definitely have received those text messages for sure and um, so that's very interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll go ahead and just ask this last question of you, Brittany, um, and sure. then we can go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, where do you see hackers and ransomware in the next five years? So I actually read a report on Forbes the other day, and they're saying um, by the year 2025 um, that there will be $265 billion in ransomware. Um, that will be uh, paid in ransom. So like I mentioned, we're at 20 billion in 2021. That is a far scary number for me. Um, so as we're, you know, continuing to really develop um, that fully mature security awareness training program, um, we have to really keep 
this top of mind, keep security top of mind, really understand um, what's going on in the landscape out there. Um, if you see anything like these text messages or your employees do, have a good way for them to report it. Um, you know, it's only going to help them out and you out because you're able to share that with um, all the employees so they can have a really better sense of what's going on out there and what we can do to be one step ahead of it. So um, unfortunately, I think um, in the next five years, um, cyber warfare will be huge. Um, you know, we saw it a little bit with Russia. Um, and unfortunately, I think, you know, as we continue on um, those those boots on the ground warfare, it's not going to be there anymore. It's definitely going to be sophisticated hackers getting trying to get into our government information and things like that. Not to scare anybody, but um, just you know, taking a look at the landscape and um, where it's been and where it can go. That's um, really where a lot of the the cyber professionals see it going. Thank you. And we did have one question specific to know before um, that I might be able to sneak in, and that'll be our last question. Um, does know before also perform SMS phishing testing, um, not just email testing? Yeah, we actually um, do have a, um, we call her Ada. It's a three prong approach. So it actually um, emails you, it calls you, and it texts you. Um, so we do have phishing and smishing um, within our, our um, platform. Great. Thank you so much for those awesome questions. And thank you, Brittany, for sharing with us today. We appreciate you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for today's Bender U. As a reminder, this session has been recorded and a link to view and share the recording will be emailed to you following the webinar, along with the copy of today's slide deck. Should you have any questions that arise, we know that tends to happen uh, after our webinar has concluded please feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to help. Thank you again and we hope you all have a wonderful day. And thank you again, Brittany. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks everybody.